And we're live. Welcome to another episode of Watch Talk with the Punters. My name's Blue Shirt, and I'm joined today by my partner um, in crime, uh, the Hello, ever popular everyone. Thomas Burnett. Hello there, everyone. How are you doing this Sunday? Good to see you all in the chat there. Yep. Yeah. And we're uh, joined by um, our special guest today, uh, Matt, 73MAF, who you all know, and also another. Uh, familiar um person around uh, the watch talk in youtube is paul m welcome guys how you doing good evening everybody good evening good to see you both. Hope well. yeah. great to see and you. i just want to say hello to everybody that's in the chat starting uh, kicked the king uh, kicking us off and who was first was our longtime friend geezer hey geezer um marco hey, welcome geezer. congratulations on the new submariner um, we've got Michelle, Underachieving Watch Collector, Dan T, Brent, uh, Abdul, our watches. Abdul, welcome. Um, he put out a good uh, video this morning about his, uh, his uh, date just. I recommend everybody yeah. go check out his channel. Mark P, uh, Underachieving, I said hello to. Uh, who else do we have in here? Uh, JJ Lacoute, welcome. Uh, Mr. Perpetual, uh, Lee Jasek, and Mr. Hello. Ken Spear Lee. checking in from Pittsburgh. Hey, Ken Spear, Rajiv Marije, and uh, Dr. Bill Sanders. Welcome. Thank, thank you for joining us, Bill. Hi, really Bill. appreciate Good to see it. You. And uh, EP uh, RFA, welcome. And uh, Alejandro from Spain, welcome. Flipping howdy, Zippo. Howdy from Texas. Flipping Zippo. Good hey, to see you all. Oh, good. And our longtime friend, uh, Hattie from Texas. How's it going, my friend? Tennessee Mike, welcome. Eric, good to see you. Uh, Tennessee Mike. Hansi, Hans Knees and Toes, welcome. All, the, all, all our friends are here. McLovin, good to see all you guys. I will uh, copy that, and I'll post that in here if anybody wants to join the party. There's the link. Um, oh, and uh, Rancher, I, I forgot to say hello to you. Uh, how are you, Clyde? Hope you're feeling better. Um, yeah, and I just want to uh, do another couple quick announcements. Um, oh, and joining us is Dr. Bill Sanders. Welcome, Bill. Welcome, Bill. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How about you guys? We're good. Hey, We're doing well. A73. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> I'm doing okay. Cool. I got a, I, I, I still have the frying pan after a half an hour, but uh, okay. I can hang out with you guys for a while. That's awesome. Well, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you, as always, for joining us, Bill. Um, uh, just a continued speedy recovery to our friend Chris uh, watches and giggles as he recovers. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And congratulations on the birth of his son, Luke. Yes, yes. A congratulations yeah. to him yeah, definitely. Uh, congratulations. on his son. And then also another congratulations goes out to uh, Ron the Shrink, who had a, a baby daughter uh, come into yeah. the world early oh, this morning. wow. Congratulations, oh. yeah, Ron. Very good. Brilliant, yeah. brilliant news. Yeah. yeah. So um, unfortunately, we do not have um, NS something with us again this week. Uh, so Thomas and I are going to have to muddle our way through the news. Yeah. Oh, we got the Vikings oh, coming. Oh yes, the Vikings, Vikings are attacking again. <laughs> Vikings. And we got the rancher. Welcome, rancher. Hi, doing rancher. Good to see you. Oh, thanks, guys. You know what's really nice about Ron the Shrink is that at least he did something productive during 2020. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, so yeah, uh, congratulations both both to Chris and his wife, and to Ron and and his wife uh, on the birth yeah, of their brilliant children. News. Brilliant yeah. news, that yeah, wonderful. All right, so um, I'll just run through. I brought a I brought up a couple of stories um, that we can yeah, start off with right for the brilliant. news, and. Um, The first one is um, Seiko, and Seiko 
uh, has brought us a new Alpinist, the new Prospects 1959 Alpinist series. Um, yeah, they're interesting, these watches, weren't they? They brought them out for about $700, was it? And they, mm -hmm. they, brought, out, they brought out a limited edition version. Correct. With, with the, the $700 ones had a date function on, which didn't look too good, but they brought out this limited edition version for $3,000, which was quite a pricey price, right. I thought. <laughs> That's quite what I thought. Jump. you got you got to be an Alpinist fan to go for this, I think. Right. I mean, nice on the bun strap. But, it is uh, nice on the bun strap. But for $3,000, I thought it was quite a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. I, I just... I, I I don't know what they were thinking, and I know they're trying to milk, you know, the Alpinist name, um, and it and it's lovely that they uh, that they were able to do a uh, a reissue um, uh, of this, but uh, just charging what they're charging is just, um, you know, I I don't get it. Well, especially especially since Hodinkee wasn't involved. Right, right. You would think that uh, you know uh, something like this. If they did another collab with uh, Hodinky, that uh, um, that they could justify that kind of price. Um, I mean, it's a nice watch. Um, it's uh, thirty six point six mil by uh, eleven mil, uh, eleven point one mil. Um, so it's it's a nice trim, compact. Um, I think it looks really nice on the on the bun strap. Um, but I, I just don't know. And I don't, you know, I'm not one of those guys that have the problem with the date at, at 4.30. Uh, you know, some people that really tick, tick them off, it doesn't bother me. Um, I just, I don't get the, uh, I, I, I don't get the price tag. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's just a re, re sort of a, a hark back to the original 1959 release isn't it it's what mm -hmm. they're celebrating so uh i don't know whether they're trying to cash in on that but uh it, it, as i say i think i mean this is a 750 dollar prospects model with the date mm -hmm. of three o'clock right which uh the only difference really is the the three thousand dollar model has got the date of 430 which mm -hmm. is blacked out slightly but the this uh if you're a real Alpinist fan, I mean, you you can go all out and get the three thousand dollar model and really go for it. But I mean, I'd be quite happy with one of these seven hundred. Exactly. Exactly. Ones, yeah, the the recreation, which is the uh, SJE zero uh, eight five, that retails for twenty nine hundred dollars. Uh, uh, but then the. Uh, you know these less expensive ones, the SPB two four one and two four three, are seven hundred and fifty. So, big difference, but interesting. Yeah, you know, I've never been a huge Alpinist guy, but um, you know, I, I I thought they were nice. I don't know if you've, if you've got to have the date at four thirty for God's sake, go get an El Primero. Yeah, yeah, I'd say something. And you can find, five. yeah, you can find you can find El Primeros out there for that price. Yeah. So um, the next one I brought up is Oris has come out with a new flavor for their um, Ooh, Aqua State Rouge. Yes, a red. Um, <laughs> a red dial Rouge. version. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, it's nice. Um, I like it. I yeah, like it. I'm, yeah. I mean, it's different. You're not going to get, there aren't too many red dial watches. Um, you know, it's a typical Aquas 41.5 uh, millimeters. It's water resistant to, to 300 meters. Um, it has a modified um, Salita 200, SW200 movement in it. Um, so you're going to get a 38 hours of power reserve. You know, we're all familiar with the with with 
with, with this movement. Um, it was their bread and butter before they, they came out with their in-house movement. Um, it's going to be $2,300. You know, they've come out with various um, iterations and different colors of this watch in, in the past. Um, but anytime yeah, somebody... Of, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, I had one of uh, the Aquases, the... Uh, the uh, I think it was like a grey bezel. Um, yeah, it was a dark grey dial mm -hmm. in the past. Mm -hmm. It was a good watch. It was a good watch. Nice. Yeah. This has got that look of a, a red dial yacht master, hasn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Welcome, Neo. Hi, Neo. Hey guys. Hi, Neo. Hello, Neo. Are you guys uh, crying yeah. or laughing after man you routed? Man City. This <laughs> I I have got FPL players, Man City. I've got three of them, and they've all blanked. Yeah, so right. not good. Okay, so we're going to move off the uh, the Oris, and oh, and we've got Paul M joining us. Hey, Paul. Oh, good to see you, Paul again. Hey, Paul. You back with us? Can you hear me? Yep, Back in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slight technical issues. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Join the club, right. my friend. Join You're the back club. with us now. You're back with us. So it's okay. Okay. The next little bit of news I can't. Uh, I came across uh, was is from Jacques Droz, and they mm. have a new series of skeleton uh, watches, the uh, Grand Second Skelet One collection, with, oh. uh, three different colors. Interesting. Um, yeah, I'm not, as you guys all know, I'm not a huge uh, skeletonized fan, but I found this one kind of interesting. Um, the uh, These three different colors are limited to 28 pieces uh, each. And, uh, you know, e they're, they're subtle. They're not, uh, some skeleton dials can be in your face. Um, these are, 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 are very subtle. Uh, the 41 millimeter diameter, um, and um, yeah, there's gray, the, uh, there's green, there's sky blue, and like a gray. So it's just it doesn't quite it doesn't quite look like a skeleton dial, does it? It's right. Kind of in the middle is. Mm -hmm. You well, can see still... what's going on. Yeah. You still need that number eight to be on display, though, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. What do you think to this bill? Yeah, I was actually oh. kind of curious about that. Do you like Jack Eight Rose? Like, excluding maybe, like, what the face looks like, the dial. Do you like the uh, the movements? The, what is the movement? Is, uh, Jack Eight Rose is owned by um, Swartz, aren't they? I believe that they are, yes. Uh, what are what are they what are they put inside of that? I'm not familiar with that. We thought, we thought you might be able to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, a, there it is. Yeah, skeletonized yeah, caliber twenty. Yeah, caliber two six six three SQ. Okay, and we whatever all know what that, that is, right? Whatever that means. Yeah. <laughs> whatever that means. The sixty-eight hours Let's power reserve. Four hertz. That's original. What else did it have? Right. Um, yeah, hour power reserve. Uh, self winding movement uses the open work oscillating weight. Um, Eighteen carat white gold. It's. Uh, you know, I, I I agree with Bruce on this. I, I'm not a big skeleton nice fan either, but I do like watches. Uh, not for twenty six thousand dollars, but I do like watches. <laughs> Where, where you can see the movements mm -hmm. and uh you know to me that's that's the most interesting part of a watch uh, uh what's the one that um vincent calabrese did with the uh, the golden um you know he's got the gears all lined up in a line a golden bridge the golden bridge that he did originally i think it was in a quorum actually and it just like the it, it's sort of like a uh, watchmaking class, mm. and you can see how everything works together. 
You know, that was something else I was going to say about the Oris. If, if you're going to stick a, what, a, a, a Salida. Salida, yeah, mm -hmm. 200 in there, you know, and charge, what, what $2,200, something like that mm -hmm. for it. Yep. A pretentious watchmaker like myself can put one of those together for a whole lot less than that. And it, this is, you know, I, I, I sort of like, they have the, what is that, that series of movements they made? It was the 100 series or something like that, that Oris did. And I thought, oh boy, you know, they're going to do some exciting things with their movement, but I just haven't seen it. And I like Oris, by the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean it, it. It's 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 an interesting uh, it's an interesting watch, um, and you know they're just following on um, to the success that they've had with the other versions. Um, and the last bit of news that I found, um, because you know, there's no collection yeah. isn't complete without a G-Shock. Hmm. Uh, are these ah, new yeah, uh, the transparent je jellyfish G-Shocks? Yes. Oh, yeah. Paul's got one of these, haven't you, Paul? Well, I have actually, yeah. You have a new skeleton one. Yeah, wow. what do How you do you find it, Paul? Paul? Yeah, it's good. Like, if you're just going out on your bike or messing about swimming, you know, it's quite a good, just a everyday beater. But yeah, it fits well. They don't, they don't wear as big as they look, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now, is that tied into the, uh, was it HBO series? Oh, wait, it's actually transparent. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> which, I like uh, that which... square one. Yeah, do you have the square one, Paul? No, I've got the GA2100. <laughs> gotcha. The Casio, whatever it's called. Gotcha. Okay. That one. Is that the one you got, Paul? Yep, 2100. Oh, we lost Paul. Did we? There he is. Yeah. That's the one you have, right, Paul? Yep, we keep losing him. You there, Paul? No, I'm not. Yeah, sorry. I've got bad is, that, is that the one you've got, Paul? That's the one, yeah. That's it. Yeah, the Cassio. Oak. All right. So, Interesting. Yeah, you know, just we don't need to go into depth about, uh, you know. <laughs> no one knows about these. G-Shocks, but uh, I just thought it was kind of interesting. So in terms of that strap, Paul, is it sort of uh, different to the normal... Uh, straps. Um, like it's a little bit different to the yeah the, the others. I've had the black ones. It's a bit the straps a bit harder than the others. To be honest. Uh, okay. Cool. So a slightly okay. different material of rubber, I think. But. Yeah. All right. So, Tom, so you want to take us into some of the news that you found? Yeah, certainly. We'll start with the uh, Zin U1 DS. So known for its utilitarian tool watches, so uh, Zin Flares. It's a variation on its best-selling dive watch. The uh, U1DS is a limited edition rendition of the brand's dive watch that's best known for having a case made from the same steel alloy as German Navy submarines. Limited to 500 pieces, the U1DS features a dial that's been uh, lapped to achieve a seemingly worn-out finish whilst retaining the famed robustness that characterizes the U1. The combination is a juxtaposition of an aged dial in a case that will likely never show anywhere. Although an uncommon look, Zinn has been using this randomly textured finish frequently of late, and it was first used on its 2019 model of the G5 of the uh, 356 Flieger Chronograph for Hourglass in Singapore, and then on the uh, EZM3 FE that was only sold in Japan. Uh, which is the model he's showing now, cool. and uh, this goes. It comes on a leather strap for two thousand two hundred euro, on a rubber mm -hmm. strap for two thousand four hundred seventy euro, or for thirty euro or more, you can get it on a bracelet. So I'd go for the bracelet myself. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a forty-four millimeters. It's fourteen point seven thick. It's a thousand meters water resistant, which is a uh, pretty good. Using yeah. a Salita SW. 2001, which is hours, minutes, seconds, and day, and that's an automatic movement with 30 hours power reserve. And it's 500 pieces. This one, so it's interesting. It's, it's, interesting. it's like a meteorite sort of dial, 
Yeah, that's what I thought yeah. it was when I first it's, saw it. Yeah, so it's got a meteorite sort of look. It's a layered sort of dial they're going for, which is interesting sort of look. It's, I suppose, they take the turn as a meteorite look. Mm-hmm. But I know, so that, this... I, I know the seventy. I know that Matt is a big fan of the uh, U one, aren't you, Matt? Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, I think it's for a dive watch. It's bang on. What what more could you want, really, from a dive watch? Yeah, I mean it. It, it it's apart it's from a pretty alarm. <laughs> hardcore tool watch, proto- yeah. you know, prototypical dive watch. Uh, this thing that, is probably that... close to being indestructible. The dial is quite interesting. It looks scratched. It is. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's got a sort of scratched look, isn't it? It's a, they yeah. call it a layered look. But, uh, mm-hmm. Pretty cool. It's, it's got that sort of meteorite look. But you, you can, I mean, I don't really think that you, the dial is that noticeable, to be honest with you. I mean, I think that the, the hands are so prominent and the, mm-hmm. indices, the, the indices yeah. are so readable that you can read the dial quite easily whether it's that color or black yeah yeah okay for sure and uh you know it's just interesting that um you know that they're releasing a couple different versions including this uh I, i'm surprised this is just japan only doing doing the left hand drive version of it but um, interesting. Uh, and is, that, in, is that because it's watch. slightly smaller, maybe? Yeah, uh, could be. Could be. Okay. So moving on. Yeah, we move on to the Breitling Chronomat Red Arrows Limited Edition. So best known for its pilot's watches, Breitling has long enjoyed relationships with air forces across the world, including the UK's Royal Air Force, especially its aerobatic team, the Red Arrows. And continuing a partnership that it's that is three decades old, Breitling has just announced the Chronomat Red Arrows Limited Edition. Uh, this is the latest in several Red Arrows editions that began in the 1990s, but, but the first is based on the uh, latest generation Chronomat, which also means, which also means it's the first in an, uh, with an in-house movement the Caliber Zero One, not as revered by enthusiasts as the Navitimer with its slide rule, bezel, and the the Chronomat is quite underrated. Introduced in 1984 to mark the Breitling's 100th anniversary, the model, the modern day Chronomat was a return to form for the brand, being a bold, brand new design equipped with a mechanical movement, specifically a Valju 7750, mm-hmm. along with the Rouleau, but bracelet which is what they call it which uh, i thought was called a bullet bracelet but, right uh, made up of baton links the chronomat quickly became the best seller that has defined breitling in the 1990s it originally had a red dial and this is essentially the same as a standard chronomat with, with the blue dial as and the red arrows logo at 12 o'clock and breitling is the only watchmaking partner with the raf so uh it's now got a blue dial with the uh, a sort of diamonds sort of uh, logo with the red arrows at the top at 12 o'clock. Mm-hmm. But yeah, definitely uh, very cool. Yeah, it's an interesting one if you're a big fan of the red arrows and uh, or if you if you've been a a serving at a server in the RAF and uh, you want to get a, a little memento of your time in the RAF and. Uh, it's a, yeah, it's a cool little watch. I don't it's know quite what it thinks. The red arrows are quite subtle on now. And it's quite, it's, uh, yeah, they are, aren't they, Matt? They're done, done more subtly than a red dial. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. I like them. But I quite like the chrono map myself. I'm, I've been taking so a, bit more, a bit more notice of it myself recently than the... I mean, like, like I said, the... the Another time is, is what everyone thinks of when they think Breitling, but I've, I've been looking at the Chronomat quite a lot recently, and it's it's quite a nice watch. I quite like it. Yeah. Cool. Especially that bullet bracelet that it's got. That, uh, yeah, definitely really... They, uh, they call it a rouleau bracelet. Right. Definitely interesting. 
and uh, it's a good looking watch. And if you're a, you know, like Thomas said, if you're an aviation aviation uh, buff, uh, this is cool. These Chronomats, uh, I, I encourage everybody to to go to a Breitling uh, dealer or boutique and uh, and to check it out in person. It, it, it's a it's a it's a good looking watch. It f sits well on the wrist. And that bracelet is very, very comfortable. It's I agree. Really, it's, uh, a, it's, a, it's a nice looking watch. That is. Yeah. Very nice. Is that a BO1 movement? Is that the one they did with Tudor? Uh, that's the one that they, yeah, they did the movement swap with. Correct. Yeah, they had they had two of them. One, most of the work uh, uh, Breitling did, and on the other one, most of the work that uh, Tudor did. Correct. Uh, but they both work together to develop a movement. That's that's something I think I'd like to see more of because you know rather than you know taking an off the shelf Salida or something like that is that you know when when they start working on actually their own movements, then they can make watches that are I think a lot more interesting. The um, you know label I, I, I by the way too I'm a big aviation fan and I like the red arrows and all of the other ones but um I think that a watch needs to be you know rather than starting with sort of what their advertising is going to be and how they're going to how they're going to pitch it uh, they ought to start with you know what would be the most interesting thing uh, that they could do I don't know if a maybe a uh, chronograph is it, but uh, I don't know. I, I just, I like the idea though. I, I don't like Brightly, period, mainly because they lie. And so does IWC. <laughs> I don't like any of them that lie. And so, but, you know, the fact that they have, you know, a couple that are good. I have some, I have some watches myself that I got lied to. So I'm not, you know, it's not totally. Uh, I'm, I'm not a virgin like the rancher, you know. So it's a, it's the kind of thing <laughs> that I do. Yes. Yeah, okay, seven, that's seven, enough seven, out of me. It's a seventy-hour power reserve. This one, Bill. So it's 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 not yeah, too it's pretty bad. Pretty good, then. Pretty good. Yeah, it's coming in at six thousand nine hundred pounds. So it's a, uh, it's quite a pricey piece. The so price uh, isn't bad. I agree. Uh, the price isn't bad, but. You know, if this is what bothers me, Thomas, is that if a watch company isn't forthcoming about one thing, they may not be forthcoming about a lot more. I mean, what is so hard about that? If you went out and bought a car and uh, and they put a uh, you bought a Nissan and they put a Toyota engine in it and then said, oh, that's OK. They're both Japanese. I don't think you'd like it. It, 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 no, it's no, no, a, no. It, it's a deception that bothers me, not the fact that they that they use, you know, an ETA or Salida. Uh, I've broken a lot of Salidas, so I know about them in my watchmaking efforts. <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyway, I, 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 I I'll get off on that. I'm sorry, no, guys. No, no, not at all, not at all we'll, Bill. That's we'll what we're here to, for. We'll move on to watch next, Bill, which you. A brand you're very familiar with, which is the uh, Roger Dubuis Excalibur Spider 39 millimeter. I know you've got a Roger Dubuis Easy Diver, right? Known, oh, yeah. known for its bold, big, and skeletonized watches, Roger Dubuis is pairing back its extravagant style just slightly with two smaller 39 millimeter versions of the Excalibur Spider, limited to 88 pieces in each guise. The Excalibur Spider 39mm retains the brand's signature Celtic Cross flying tourbillon in the open work case of the lightweight Spider series. In addition to the twin Spider models, the new 39mm size also includes an addition created in collaboration with the Italian tire maker Pirelli that's limited to just 28 pieces. With the same aesthetic found on earlier Excalibur models, which were either 45 millimeters or 47 millimeters, the new 39 millimeter models are practically rather are practical rather than innovative, and the movement is currently found inside the 36 millimeter Excalibur watches for women. Mm -hmm. The uh, 39 millimeter cases make the Excalibur 
substantially more wearable and the new case is undoubtedly a commercial decision since the line between watches for each gender gets increasingly fuzzy. More women now want larger watches while uh, many men are reverting to smaller case sizes and apparently the uh, 36mm Scalibur watches were the prize hit amongst male clients in Japan hmm. despite being marketed as a ladies watch. And this 39mm version therefore fills a sweet spot which may be worth the uh, consideration for both genders. So, uh, the, what do you think to this uh, one then, Bill, this uh, Roger Debris Excalibur? It's coming in at a lot of money. It's uh, coming in at $159,000. Is Thousand five hundred dollars for the titanium, <laughs> or one hundred eighty-two thousand five hundred dollars for the pink gold. Well, the good thing about it is that it's three hertz. Otherwise, I can't say much in favor of it. Uh, you, the the kind of thing that I don't like about skeletons, and this is semi-skeleton, is that you can't tell the time. You know, that red one right there. As soon as yeah. that goes over, I mean, it's like. And then they have sort of the, um, I don't know what you call it, that, that, that pattern behind it. Mine has got a black, um, uh, what is that, the carbon uh, fiber mm -hmm. uh, behind it, and then white uh, hands, and it's easy to tell the time with. Right. And uh, But, you know, for $159,000, you know, after reviewing a lot of these, you know, the guys who are AHCI guys, you know, you look at what they do, and they they have just doing really cool stuff when they charge that kind of money for the watch. But what is that? A, a single tour beyond, and they and that doesn't help you a lot if you have a wristwatch unless you're paralyzed. Uh, so, you know, I I, I don't, I'm not crazy about that watch. You, you know, I tell you, these the the only thing left of Roger Dubuis is the name because I I just don't you know he had enough trouble uh, in the design with that uh, guy that it was partnered with mm -hmm. uh, Diaz or something, his name Lamborghini was, they you know partnered with Lamborghini weren't no, they? no 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 I, I I don't mean that um, yeah you know, the not the car company but uh, when actual the person Roger Dubuis had a partner who was sort of little sort of arrogant off the wall and thought he was a great designer uh he he did some some really excellent designs Th that's mm -hmm. the kind of guy i'm talking about lamborghini of uh, you know wh when is that old one that uh by um uh chopard and they have the um the straps that look like uh, tires car oh, tires Mil and, Milia? yeah that's the one that's one i was thinking of those are really inexpensive. I think they have, uh, you know, most of them have ETA movements, but, you mm -hmm. know, right now you can get them for a song. But $159,000 for a watch you can't read? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm with you, Bill. <laughs> Not my cup of tea. But, you yeah. know, I, I think if you're, you're spending this kind of money on, on a watch, the the – you know, like with a with a Richard Mill, it's it's not about telling the time. It's about, you know, showing everybody yeah. how much you can spend on a watch. Yeah, I I think you're right, because uh, there's some watches I think that are actually worth that much, <laughs> but you know, right. but th this isn't one of them. I agree. I agree. Okay. Well, okay. Well, my frying pan is on the way to one more, lower the one boom. More, Bill. Just okay, get your I'll stick for on one more. One. Just get your opinion okay. on this one, Bill. The uh, okay. Louis Erard Excellence Emile Grand Fur. So, best okay. known for its collaborations with independent watchmakers, the uh, La Regulator VNA Halter sold out in a matter of hours. Oh, Louis man. Erard has been gaining recognition for making the style of high end watchmaking affordable. Continuing that focus, the brand just announced the excellent Emile Grand Fur, a time-only wristwatch in traditional enamel dial in a striking ivory hue. Mm. The Grand Fur or fired in an oven enamel dial is fairly difficult to manufacture, resulting in a rejection rate that is often over half. 
As a result, such dials are usually only found in high-end watches, and it's Louis Erard's first use of a fired enamel dial, but true to form, the brand has retained its usual pricing position, with a retail price of only under 4,000 Swiss francs. Wow. I think this is beautiful. I think That's it's beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely uh, gorgeous. What is, what is the price on that? This is 3,900 Swiss francs. It's using an right. SW261-1, which I presume yeah, is... I, I, I think this is where, as collectors, we really need to do is to start looking at the quality of the what the watch actually does rather than, you know, Lamborghini or anything. That's not a Lamborghini. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Even I know that. Uh, but this is something, you know, teaming uh, up with some of these guys and coming at, out with affordable watches, I think is great. Look at those blued hands, man. Spectacular. Yeah, really beautiful. Oh, aren't they? That, that enamel dial is just gorgeous. Yeah. Those blued hands just finish it off just perfectly. I think it looks gorgeous. Yeah, this was like a good I, 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 Yeah. Comes on like a calf the, leather strap. It's a uh -oh. But what was the movement back up? 2824. ETA 2824. Uh, let's see. No, back up. I think it's a Salita. Oh, Salita. Sorry. Right. right. Uh, Salita, Salita S261 1. That go. might be a pretty interesting movement. Uh, there's some in the 200 series by Salita that are really interesting. Uh, and that one, you know, when well, you can see the back, the fact that they give you a really good view of that means that, you know, you got more than junk in there. I like that watch. Yeah, good find, Thomas. This, uh, uh, you know, for a dress watch, it's a little big at forty-two, but um, uh, I like the small seconds. I, I like the dial layout, and I just I'm in love with those blue hands. That's and for the and for the price, you you, you can't argue yeah. with this watch. No, that's a classy looking watch. Yeah, and if it's too big for you, it'll be good enough for some woman. <laughs> I like the crown, <laughs> too. Yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, All right. Thank you for uh, putting up with Bill. me, yeah, and uh, we'll, we'll see you later. Take care. All right. Yeah, take, take care, care Bill. 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 And you're back. He's back, our guest. Back you there, Matt. Area. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> see you, Bill. All right. Yep, he's gone. All right, so um, what do you so, want to move on to next, we've Thomas? Got some, we've got some photographs of uh, Matt's collection that we'd like to go through. And, uh, yeah, you said you, we went through your collection on the Flippo Zip, Flipping Zippo channel uh, once before, didn't we, Matt? Yeah, we did, yeah. Yeah, we had a chat about it and uh, flick through. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you said you're quite content with your collection at the moment. You don't have any plans to... Uh, let anything yeah. go. You don't have any no. plans to sell anything. I should let things go, really, to be fair. <laughs> I've got the... uh, too many watches, really. No, no. Bite your tongue. There's no such never thing. Got to, never got too many watches. And uh, you just purchased this uh, watch, I think, just after, just at the point when we did the uh, last review. Yeah, I think it was lockdown 1.0, uh, March. 2020 <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i uh yeah i bought this one in uh, june last year i think it was now wonderful um, watch yeah it's uh it, it it's my favorite watch basically uh, the, out of all all my watches that's definitely my favorite watch 100 mm -hmm. percent. Yeah. beautiful it's yeah i mean yeah it, it's just such <sighs> Such a beautiful uh, case. Uh, I mean, it's it's quite seventies, isn't it? The case. It's mm -hmm. uh, you know that um, that look. I mean, it's thirty-seven millimeters, but it does not wear a, like a thirty-seven millimeter. It's more like a forty, really. I would say. But um, I'm it, just going through the note. Sorry, sorry, Matt. Carry on. It, it's the it's the panda as well. The panda aesthetic for me is beautiful in a in a, a chronograph i think that's 
top notch for me the the panda the panda dial yeah it's beautiful yeah. it's gorgeous i was just going through your notes from uh the last from the that you sent me when uh we did the last review and you said uh, okay. early, early in 2020 you thinned out the collection and sold quite a few an Omos, a Seiko and an Oris and you were going to put that money towards a chronograph you had your eye on the Speedmaster Racing or the Zenith 384 Revival and you thought you went thought that if you went for the Speedmaster you could get the Zin U50 as well and another another watch you like the look of but you, re you loved the A384 Revival when it came out a great yeah. size, a retro look, and any photo patina, just a perfect remake of the original. And it's a panda dial, which makes such a great look. When you saw one come up for sale, you thought it'd make an offer. And to, surprise, and to your surprise, the offer was accepted. It's such a beautiful watch for you, and you wanted a chronograph that wasn't too dressy. You recently ordered the ladder bracelet. And you can't wait for that to arrive. It's such a beautiful watch. You'd love to operate the chronograph and enjoy the sapphire case back. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you've got a sapphire well, case back. It's and really enjoyable, isn't it? An El Primo yeah. movement to look at. Yeah. It, it, Everything, it, what it, I said then, hasn't changed at all. It's still exactly the same. Yeah, it's a stunning watch, man. It, it really, really is. It was... Um, when we talk about the bracelet, I, uh, I went to the AD and there was two other guys that came over, like that worked there, mm -hmm. just just to have a look at the watch. It was quite, <laughs> I was quite shocked. Kind of feel great. Yeah. And it was like, you know, they, they came over. This is Watches of Switzerland. They both came over and had a look and thought, yeah, this is the bee's knees, this watch is, you know. <laughs> and I was quite shocked, really. I think if we move on to a photograph, we might even we might be able to see it on the bracelet if we can just uh, sure move on a photograph. Uh, yep. Hold on. You move on to another photograph on the next photograph, blue shirt. We can. There we go. In all its glory. So that's it on the gay Freire bracelet, the ladder bracelet. Yeah. It's, so uh, you pre you prefer it on that to the uh, the racing leather strap, do you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, definitely. I think it's um it's a lot more casual. On that bracelet, mm -hmm. the, the leather is very dressy, but that bracelet makes it um, definitely uh, a lot more casual. Uh, which it, it's my preference at the minute. Yeah, the the, the ladder bracelet is really it, it, it's so different than anything else. It really it makes this watch pop. It's it's very rattly. I mean, you know, it's it's not a modern sturdy bracelet mm. even though it is a modern watch mm -hmm. that bracelet is very uh it's, not, jing uh, it's not jingly jangly jingly jangly it? yeah, uh -oh. it is, yeah. <laughs> 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 you can't beat a bit of jingly jangly can you <laughs> yeah so it's yeah love it love it on that bracelet somebody mentioned that i might get a, a suntan in the middle of the links yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there. yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah the, the, the bracelet makes the watch to be fair zenith hit it out of the park with this they went back in their archives and and they're just doing it they're, they they're really doing did. it right they really did. i want one i want one so much matt I, well i've got one for, i've got one for sale it's uh right i think <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how envious i am of this watch well, I, I, I really want one to add to the collection you well, know Matt? Last year, uh, a blog to watch released uh, a little gadget that will tan your wrist. Actually, you should do a lookup <laughs> for that device. Really? Yeah, a blog to watch came out with it. That's funny. That's funny. What do you think, Rancher? You, you, I, I, you dig this watch, right? Well, yeah, and it wasn't that long ago where you could pick up maybe not a uh, maybe not a Zenith, but similar style watches, seventies watches for like next to nothing. Yeah. 
you would almost you would go go to places you would almost trip over these. There are so many of them. Not anymore. No. Far from it. But uh, really, really a, a cool watch, Matt. And uh, I was so happy when you picked this up, uh, just because uh, it's it, it's stunning. My wife's uh, forty next year. Well, this year, sorry. And we're hoping to go to Las Vegas, and I think I'm going to take that watch. And I think it look good on the strip. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. What, a, what a holiday watch. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Could, could you skip to the next photograph, please? Sean? I I can. I can. Just give me a second. Where am I? Hold on. Just give me a second here. So you got uh, quite a few of the watches in the collection, haven't you, Matt? You got uh, quite a few of the watches hiding there, apart from the uh, Zenith, which is the. Say again, uh, sorry. You got quite a few of the watches hiding in the collection, haven't you? Apart from the Zenith. Oh and, yeah, uh, yeah. There's, there's another great shot of the Zenith on the wrist, and uh... yeah, it's uh, it's yeah, it's bang on. It, it, it's quite tricky. I mean, you know, in the UK as well. If you're if somebody comments on your watch. Uh, it's you're a bit wary, aren't you, Thomas? You, you are. You are. I do, I do find that. Do you find that, Paul? Yeah, not many people talk about watches in the UK. I don't think. Well, some, not in public. You tend to sort of like. I've yeah, had a couple of like people comment on. <laughs> tend to hide them under your wrist, don't you? Under your cuff. Yeah. A couple of people have commented on when I've worn that. Mm -hmm. But but it's not sort of, oh, I, I'm going to chop your hand off kind of right, thing. It's right, like, right, right, right. It's been a true compliment. It. Yeah, I, I yeah, got you. Yeah, I got yeah, you. Yeah. Cool. So this is the re most recent acquisition on the right-hand side. Yeah. We've got the, the, oh, 7, uh, the 7A28 7120, which yeah. is a that's a, a reference. It's a Seiko reference, isn't it? It's a it is, pilot, yeah. Pi pilot's watch issued to the Army Air Corps. Yeah, it's hidden in your wardrobe. Uh, yeah, I've got one hidden in my wardrobe, <laughs> which I'm, I can't find at the moment. I'm desperately trying to find it, but you got one of these, and they're they're brilliant watches. They're quartz watches, aren't they? But they're, it's a it's a, it's a it's first a military analog. issued military issued uh, watch in the nineties, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, so. This picture basically depicts on the left the uh, Zenith is probably the first automatic chronograph you could you could say really, um, mm -hmm. and the Seiko is the first. Well, the, that that movement is the first uh, analog quartz chronograph movement in that mm -hmm. Seiko. Yeah, and it, this one was issued to the uh, RAF between. Yeah, as you said, Thomas, I think mine's 1990, which is probably the last year they were. Yeah, I think that was uh, the last issued. year with you. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was, it was, it, it basically come, it, it boils down to I wanted to have an issued watch in my collection and I tried to get a, I tried to get a Hamilton 1973 birth year. Uh, was it W10 or W? Uh, yeah, something like that. And I missed out on that one. Um, and then, uh, funnily enough, I watched a, a video by ID guy, and I saw this mm -hmm. particular watch, and I thought, well, not this one, but I saw this, and I thought, yeah, I really, I really like that watch. So it was an eBay purchase, uh, you know, late night, dodgy eBay purchase, and I had to get it serviced, um, and the guy I sent it to was. He said it was it was a good watch, so thank God for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we've, got, not... we've got a couple of pictures of the service that we can show later on. Sorry, sorry to put in there. Carry on, Matt. 
Yeah, because they, they are serviceable. I mean, I know it's a quartz, but it's um, mm -hmm. it's a metal. You know, it's made of uh, it's metal materials. It's fully serviceable quartz movement. So, you know, it's not a throwaway watch, basically. Lovely. Is what I'm saying. But yeah, it's so a, you got. It, uh, it's a great watch, I think. Yeah. I can't believe you've lost yours, Thomas. Yeah, desperately trying to find it. Desperately. <laughs> well, it, I got mine when I was seventeen. In that, oh, okay. when I was when I was at college, with I bought it off a a friend. It's a while dad, ago, then. I bought it off a friend whose dad stole it off his who's uh, who stole it off his dad, who was a pilot in the, in the army air corps. And uh, I, you know, I, I wore it for about fifteen years and then discarded it. And uh, I've, I, yeah, I haven't, I haven't been able to find it for ages. Really, you lost this watch, Thomas? Yeah, well, I, I just, it's one of those things that I just put down and then started to wear other watches. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's it, because it's quartz, it, uh, the battery ran out, and you know, I got it replaced occasionally, but. I, I wasn't into watches as much as I am now, when I had this. Thomas, how uh, many years has it been since you've cleaned your room? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, it was. It, I, I, I shifted everything into a wardrobe when I got my room painted. So I, everything, uh. got, everything got chucked into a wardrobe when I got my room painted, and. Uh, Everything got really, literally tipped into a wardrobe, so it's a real mess. That's why I'm trying to find everything in this wardrobe at the moment. So it's, uh, that's my excuse, anyway. Did you happen to find Turkish delight in the wardrobe? No, I go to Turkey to get my Turkish delight, Clive. <laughs> 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 Uh, is there any other watches lying in your wardrobe, Thomas? That uh... yeah, there are. There's, 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 there's a few. I've got my my grandpa's old one and a few other. What's that? Is that wardrobe the lion, the witch, in the wardrobe the one that goes all the way? <laughs> <laughs> so if we, if we can just clip onto the next photograph, I think this one might be your collection in, oh, in right, full. Okay. Yeah, Lovely. So here we go. We can go through your collection in in full now. So we've got the we got with the Omega Seamaster Seamaster Professional, the aka the James Bond, which you yeah. said there was the first example of this watch was a quartz appeared in Goldeneye. Yeah, it was a gift from your dad around uh, ten years ago, and you had it serviced by Omega in twenty eighteen. A classic piece with an amazing dial and very comfortable bracelet. You got the G-Shock GW M5610-1ER, a present from your wife. You take it with you where you go and you travel with it and wear it to the gym. It's radio controlled, receives yeah. a signal at 2 a.m. each day from the atomic clock in the UK. Uh, you got the IWC Mark 15 from 2000. You always love the aesthetics from the watch hands and the hands set in particular and squared off our hand. Yeah. Previously, you had a Time Factor Speedbird 3, which you had in the very faithful homage to this piece. Knew someone had a watch and wanted to sell it, and re had recently bought an Aquanaut from the AD when you bought it off them. Uh, it's a beautiful watch. You've got the Breitling Aerospace. You were after a quartz grab and go watch and remembered liking the design of the Breitling Aerospace in the 90s, looking through the jeweler's window, and it managed to look so cool. There's an Anna Digi display. Managed to find one in a blue dial and uh, lovely condition. And you pulled the trigger. Uh, you've yeah. got the Rolex Explorer 2, the 16570, the 2013 model. Always loved the look of the Explorer 2 in Polar. Uh, had a white 36mm date just at the time. And you preferred white dial to the Cyclops. Uh, in yeah. Uh, in your mind, you said the Cyclops is not that obvious. Um, not in the white dial, no. But uh, you went for the Polar Explorer. Um, you had a call from the uh, AD in January 2019, and mm. you, said you could get a G serial for you. 
Yeah. And you'd, you'd watch a lot of AC3 vids. You had a, had a bad influence there from the <laughs> AC3 vids weighing the air, uh, weighing his Explorer. It's a great, yeah. it's a great watch, and I. It is. I, it's wonderful. It's. A wonderful I miss watch. mine. I, I, re, I really do. What, out of the collection, Matt, which, which do you gravitate to? Which, which is your favorite? Um, uh, my favorite watch is definitely the Zenith. 100%. The Zenith. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Probably the IWC, uh, the Mark Fifteen is probably the second most worn watch out of mm -hmm. all of those. I would say. Um, the Tudor, Tudor Black Bay 58 there, the OG version you said you're yeah. always interested in Tudors but the Black Bays were too big for your 17 centimetre wrist and you also like the North Flag yeah and, I mean the, uh, the Black Bay 58 looks massive there because it's on a rubber B which point uh, which sort of protrudes it off the you know it's not flat on the uh, it's not flat on that um, right. piece of work there so yeah, the the Black Bay Fifty Eight. I'd like to add the the rubber B strap is amazing. I mean, if anyone out there's got one, it's superb strap. So probably, I would say, out of those, oh god, I'd, I'd like to get down to a four or five piece collection. Really, really? Uh, yeah, I think so. Really, I mean, that's I, surprising. I saw, I saw Jay Sykes in the chat earlier, and he has, he's got the uh, Explorer, he's got a Zenith, and I think he's got a Tudor, and also a JLC. And I look at that collection, and I think, yep, that is bang on. But then I look at mine, I think, I can't, I don't want, there's nothing I want to get rid of. <laughs> yeah, I'm having a hard yeah, time you know, getting down to six, man. Four seems so much even harder than six. Four or five, I could probably do. I'd probably keep both the Explorers, the IWC, the Zenith, and also the Seiko. And I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you got the Explorer 1, the 114270, which is the 2005 version. You said you had a phone call from the uh, local dealer where you traded your date just for the Explorer 2 and said he'd recently received a 36 meter, millimeter Explorer and trained it and wondered if you're interested in taking a look and you obviously yeah. uh snapped that one up yeah i did yeah and it's it's uh, yeah i mean this here is 36 millimeter to 41 millimeter it's like an arch so all these watches go up in 36 37 38 the mm -hmm. iwc's 38 the uh, tudor's 39 and then you got 40 and then 41 and you still not so, you still not lost the love for the Seiko Five, the graph paper dial yeah, Seiko Five, yeah. yeah. Well, let me let me ask you a quick question about the Explorer. As as we know, I also have a little experience with the thirty six millimeter Explorer. But how do you feel about all the people that say, "Oh my God, thirty six is too small"? Uh, I, I disagree, really. I uh, that that watch. Is just perfect in 36 millimeter end of serious you know give it, it 10 16 i mean no nah to me that's i tried on the 39 millimeter and it didn't feel right to me so yeah i went for the one i liked and, you know what the heck you know so you you seriously think you could get down to four watches out of these? <laughs> Probably not. <no. laughs> I mean, you said the, Bright, the Breitling Aerospace. You the said Breitling you could probably go. Great. I thought you yeah, said that. Uh, I thought you said you liked that one. It was a great grab and go sort of. Quarter, that's, that's the only one I can one. look at that I could get rid of. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Is that have you replaced that with the Seiko, the pilot's watch? Do you think? Oh, as a gosh. as a quartz grab and go. So the yeah you've got the uh, I I mean for for me working from home sometimes the Se the Seiko and the Breitling are great to just grab there you go with yeah, yeah you need you need a quad scrub and go don't you in the, in yeah the absolutely definitely definitely but I I, I can't say that I'd, <coughs> the, the the Breitling I've been I've been to Toronto I've been to Cuba I've, you know 
I've quite, I've travelled a bit with that Breitling. So yeah, you've it's got some memories, it. you know. Absolutely, you know, it's, got memories, it's, yeah. it's got a story. To, it's got your story to tell, you know. See, I don't, I don't know about the quartz. Quartz would be nice, but on the other hand, that's having just a no date. It's kind of fulfills the same function. All you do is just set, the, you know, set the time and then wind it two or three times and off to the race. This is a super quartz. Yeah, that's actually a very good. Uh, movement <laughs> that's in that bright lane. Um, I've yeah, seen that yeah. movement. You know that movement is in a few of the watches. It's, it's in a Belden Ross. It's in a Dodan. Um, but but I, have, I have a question for you, Matt. So you've got a G Shock there, where maybe not the greatest because it's still a uh, there's a menuing system before you can get to the function. But you have other chronographs where if you wanted to time something, you could just press a button and it starts timing. How do you deal with the UI on the uh, on that Breitling? Because it's all through the crown, right? You've got to press it to get it into, let's say, a chronograph mode, uh, similar to a G-Shock. Maybe not as many menus, though. Yeah, it's 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 very easy because it's you pull the crown out and then you roll you roll the crown and yeah. you skip through each of the menus and then you, you settle on one and there you go. I mean. That's it's, kind of my issue with them, right? You've got to pull the crown out. You've got to scroll through the menu. Like, it's not like you could just press the button and it starts timing. No. If you press that button, it'll give you a minute repeater, which yeah. is pretty cool. <laughs> well, that's what I say to myself. I've got a minute repeater, you know? <laughs> okay, it's a quartz one, but, you know. No, I understand. I mean, I've looked at I I know, I know about that movement because I've looked into that movement. and Because, like I said, it's in a few watches. Um, I, it was to me it, it offered something different uh, at the time because I totally it, it I totally agree man I keep looking at these watches titanium. with that movement in it that was titanium it's a titanium watch so it's very light um, it was a quartz and it was mm -hmm. it didn't have a second hand so there was no issue with the uh, the quartz ticking uh, element it, yep, yep. You know, so it, it kind of felt analog but well it's an LED digi isn't it so it's uh you know but yeah i know what you're saying i know what you're saying i don't um i don't the only thing i time on is my phone i don't time anything else on a watch unfortunately mm -hmm. you know, there's a few chronographs there i don't i don't use them at all yeah, I mean, I mean, I think I can speak for for all of us. You know, other than maybe time in a steak or or, or an egg, uh, none of us are really using the the chronograph feature no. for for what it's intended. It's more more uh, of a look, you know, an aesthetic that 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 appeals well, to us. But the, the, the timing the timing for me is more about um, you set the time and you get an alarm when that time is up. Right. And none of none of these watches offer that facility. Well, maybe the Breitling would, but you know, or I know the G Shock would as well. Yeah, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'd I'd like to be alerted to when the time is up. Right. Rather right. than it's the same with a diving watch. I mean, who looks at you know? You're not going to time anything with a diving watch, really, are you? Let's be honest. Uh, well, I don't. Right. Yeah, I, I I rarely do. I, I rarely do. I wanted to ask Paul what 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 do you think of uh, of Matt's collection? Yeah, I was just going to ask Paul the same. Hmm. Yeah, no, it's a very nice collection. Um, yeah, Zenith is great. Obviously, love the two Rolexes, <coughs> like the original Bond. You know, the Bond Quartz Seamaster. Mm -hmm. What's that? About two thousand, isn't it, Matt? Is it around two thousand? Well, that's not a quartz. That yeah. is an automatic. It's so. It's, oh, it's a real uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, that one is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty do good. you have Do you have a quartz grab and go yourself, Paul? Um, apart, apart from the G Shock that you told us about earlier on. Do no, you have just, like, just do you have like a Mecca quartz, like the Breitling that Matt's got. No, no. I used to have some years ago, but not not anymore. No, just a G Shock grab and go. That's the only one at the moment. You, you have no date ones like the rancher was talking about. You have got you've got no dates that you can quickly set and uh Yeah, I've got um, a no date submariner. Wind, quick wind and wears, yeah. And do you the, find um, you wear the do you find you wear the no date submariner a lot then? I wear that quite a lot, but I, normally I wear the um been wearing the Black Bay fifty eight on it as a general sort of daily. And also I've got the rubber piece strap. 
Have you still got both of those, Paul? The, the LG and the blue one? I've just got the blue one. I've got rid of the black one, to be honest. Oh, you got rid of it? Yeah, let's get a blue one and put it on the rubber bay. Cool. But it's just such a perfect everyday watch, really. It just wears so well, especially on that rubber yeah, bay. It's, uh, yeah, it's the rubber bees, the, I mean, I'm not, you know, associated you know, with rubber bees, well, but yeah. no. they are expensive. But they are a comfortable strap, 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah very comfortable. Yeah, and it, it looks really good on that on that Black Bay 58. It really does. I'd like to add the green one for that uh, model, I think. The, mm -hmm. the green the green rubber bee might look pretty good on that, I think. It looks great, the rubber V. I think a green one would look, would look great. It'd look very commando esque, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Agreed. Very, very army. For the holiday in Portugal next, well, this year, hopefully. Holiday in Portugal. Fing yeah. fingers, fingers crossed for you, Matt. Fingers crossed. Yeah, for you. fingers cheers, crossed. If, if the border's <laughs> open and we can travel. So, yeah. so, going back to this four watch sort of selection, this four watch. Yeah. Pick, I presume the Zenith being there. The Zenith and yeah, so the Zenith in what else would be in the Explorer? Uh, uh, I think I'd like to keep both of the Explorers, but then I'd like so to the add Zenith, the Zenith and both the Explorers. That's three. <laughs> You've got one watch left. <laughs> <laughs> the IWC, uh, the IWC. You said you were the IWC a lot, yeah, so that's yeah, got to be in there, hasn't it? Yeah, uh, but. You can't go I wrong mean, with that four-piece uh, combo meal deal. Two Explorers, a Zenith, and an IWC. I mean, so you got a, you got a GMT in the Explorer two. You got yep. a, a wind and wear in the Explorer one. You got a chronograph in the Zenith, and you got a beautiful wind and wear in the uh, IWC. Yeah, absolutely. I th yeah, I think I'd be yeah. silly to get rid of the Explorers. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, I I I, I agree. I, I I'm. <laughs> Again, I I still miss my my uh, my thirty nine Explorer and my uh, forty two Explorer two. Oh, um, maybe they're a great a watch. Ten, ten piece watch collection. <laughs> now you could be very happy with just those four, Matt. Uh, uh, no, if yeah, that's what you that, wanted to do. Out of all of those, my favorite watch is definitely that Zenith. Hundred percent. I look at that, even though I don't wear it. I look at it every day, mm -hmm. and it is. It's it is my favorite watch. Makes you smile, right? Yeah, it's uh, yeah. You know, it's it's not really about um, the fact that I mean I got a good deal on it, but it's not the fact that I'm not going to lose money or anything like that. I just f for what they offer in terms of price, it's a step above. If you know what I mean, mm -hmm. it kind of feels to me like I'm getting I'm getting up up there in terms of watch making you know so, mm -hmm. yeah that's my favorite yeah I, I, th you. I think what i like about your collection matt is that um every piece in here is uh something that you got because you are going to wear um it looks like you know like, like a working collection uh, mm -hmm. yeah um, it took me a long time basically yeah and it doesn't matter how long it takes i mean the, the longer it takes the more fun you have um yeah Otherwise, you know, you just shoot your load in one pop and you got it on home. <laughs> you got 45 minutes still on the clock. But um, <laughs> but the thing I kind of like about your collection, uh, you know, and it's probably... Oh, it's what probably the hell is that right analogy now. about? I'm just trying to I'm just trying to wrap my head around that. It's like, and I'm not... No, I just... I what, never what, 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 Yeah. Rancher, when, when I I'll, I'll come down 35W and pick you up, and you know we'll, we'll, we'll go out. We'll go out. You know. <laughs> okay, you're on, you're obviously in Dallas if you're talking about 35W. We just have 35 North and South. Oh well, I'm I'm in I'm in Minneapolis, so 35W go, goes North and South too up here. But yeah, huh. yeah, we'll just come down 35, and we'll go out. Um, but I was gonna say, Matt, the other thing I like about your collection. And it's probably because, uh, you know, a lot of us probably when we see collections that mirror our own collections, we're like, oh, yeah, this is cool. Um, and But that's the sort of the case with me. When I look at your collection, um, I see a lot of similarities to things that draw me to watches. It's slightly different flavors, you know. Yeah. Um, but a pretty much like very similar watches are, is what attracts me to, to this hobby. And, 
to what I like to wear and things like that. So I, I, I like your collection a lot. I, I, I do. I mean, nobody wants to wear an ugly watch, do they? I mean, I, it has to appeal to me for me to, it doesn't matter whether it's, you know, you buy it today and you can sell it tomorrow for mm -hmm. whatever. I, I'd like to buy something that I'm going to wear for the long term and, you know, hopefully, you know, I don't get burnt in the process because the, the 58, I, I bought that from my AD by me and then straight away I've sort of asked for an Aquanaut. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I was, no, just gonna, I was just going to say, yeah. I was going to say, mate, you, you said you were going to be 50 in a couple of years and you'd like to buy a watch. Still am. Yeah, <laughs> you'd, like, you'd, like, you'd like to buy a watch to commemorate that milestone with, and you're on the waiting list for an Aquanaut where you bought your 258 from. Are you, yeah, are you still on that waiting list? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I might, I might be 60, <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably be 60 before that. Uh, to, there's yeah, no rush, but... Matt. There's no, there's no rush. But you, you I, went, also, I went from a Black Bay 58 to uh, well, you also, you, also, you also said that you like pre ceramic two tone models, in particular the root beer on a Jubilee, yeah. and they're rare as yeah, teeth yeah. in good condition. But uh, you said yeah, you also like the black two tone Submariner. Would you consider yes. one of those as a 50th birthday watch? Definitely would. Are you selling one? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I wish I had one. I wish yeah, I had a root. I wish I had a root beer, a, a <laughs> one six seven five three root beer. Oh, yeah, I'd yeah, love cool. one, but cool. uh, Clint Eastwood, yeah, I'd love one of those myself. Yeah, but, you and uh, me both, Thomas. You and me both. Like you said, so, they're rare as hen's teeth in good condition. But, yeah. uh, the the, the uh, two tone, I'm definitely appreciating the look of that. The two tone models at the moment, I think, uh, yeah, they're pretty cool. But the pre-ceramic ones in particular, not the, not yeah, the, not yeah, the ceramic thought, ones. Yeah, I mean, 40 millimeter for me is the sweet spot. So gotcha. I haven't, I've, I've not tried on a 41, you know, one of the new, like what well, you've got, uh, Bruce, the uh, the new bluesy, which is the dial on that is stunning. I must admit, 100%, that dial is amazing. Thank you. On that new bluesy, yeah. Um. So I haven't haven't had the chance to try one of those on. It's it's not really a forty one, is it? It's kind of no. It's forty point yeah. five. Yeah. Up from forty point two. Yeah. So it, that could that could be that could you know that, that you know that could be a, a doer you know a gala and, whatever. And, and you also said that long term you'd like to add a JLC dress watch, and you were keen on the thirty-six seven millimeter master control line, uh, leaning more towards the uh, Reserve de Marche. Yeah, that's the, changed more than the annual <laughs> calendar. So that's all gone out of the window now. Has yeah, because I'm now in, I'm now in the Reverso camp. I uh -huh. actually would love a Reverso. Yeah. Oh. What uh, what 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 flavor? Um piques your, your interest i'm i'm a big uh, tribute to 1931 fan yeah so i mean yeah uh one of my friends has got one of, one of those and i felt it was a bit too long for, for my wrist okay you know i haven't got a you know it's 17 centimeters which that's right yeah so it's not uh it's not a big wrist but i felt that was a little too long for me i like the uh the duo, the uh, the duo, duo face, duo, UA, duo yeah. face, yeah. Sorry, yeah, the duo face. Duo um, face. I think. How old are you, man? Forty-seven. Oh, oh, well, you've got like a good, like you know, thirty-three years to go until you can like actually wear a reverse. Shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Neo. Oh, Neo. Hey, hey. Neo. I've been, I've been looking. That hurts. At that hurts. I've been, I know. I've been I know. Looking at, Leather man Guys, to wear with your, it on. <laughs> with, your tribute, with, with your reversals, I know. You, you look, you, you, you know, you, you're gonna, you're gonna look great at the bar with the head on. <laughs> Rancher, hey, you, so you had a, you had a duo face, didn't you? You there? Did we lose the rancher? I, I think, think he did have a dual face. Yeah, maybe yeah I think. Uh, 
uh, like I said, Jay Sykes has got a, he's probably got the best duo face mm-hmm. uh, that I like anyway. It's got a push button to change the hour hand. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, on the flip side, the dark uh, dial. Yeah, yeah. That's, well, I'm in negotiation. Well, I try, I did try to buy one last year, but it was gold. It was pink gold. Mm-hmm. And he didn't have the, you know, the, um, this was a different version, but there, there was a duo face where they had uh, a hand that it was like a gold hand that you had to point into the crown to change mm-hmm. the hour hand. And he didn't have that. And I thought, oh, no, I'm not going to buy that then. So I missed out on that one. But yeah, duo oh, face. Shame. I obviously get- tried to buy a. A GMT Master Two recently as well, which uh, mm-hmm. fell through unfortunately. All right, yeah, it's going to happen. So, so we we're, we're talking about maybe pairing it down to four watches, and I asked you a question uh, over email, and uh, you answered, and with a few suggestions, whether, and the question was, if you had to start again with a five-piece collection, uh, what would it be? And uh, you, you gave us some suggestions. So if you if you could go to the uh, start off with the links, uh, Blue Shirt, would that be oh, okay? Oh sure, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do that. Uh, we, okay. You're talking about pairing down to the uh, pairing down from that collection that you've gotten to a four piece, and uh, I thought <laughs> we'd go through your five piece collection if you were to start again. This was so Gosh. if you if you were to start again with your watches again, I thought this was a lovely little collection. This is a a five is piece. A, a, a five piece that Matt would start off with again. So his first watch was a first choice, which we know you is is a watch you love, and we've talked about in the news earlier on. Well, we talked about the U one, but uh, yeah, this is this is this is the uh, Zin U fifty, <coughs> which is a you said the, a dive watch for the collection. The, sub, the submarine tegumented steel with the 500 meter water resistance. You really liked it. Tell us what you like about this watch, and Matt. I just like the fact that um, it's tegumented submarine steel, mm-hmm. 500 meter water resistance. It's totally, totally over engineered. So, you know, a pool in Portugal, I think we could handle that, couldn't we? Wearing one of these, you know. It looks great. I love <laughs> it. I love it. I think it's a great watch. I'd love I mean, it. Uh, I mean, people might say, oh, okay, it's not in-house, or it's not got an in-house movement or what have you. But if I'm wearing a watch in the water, I want something that's practical. You know, it's it's not – I mean, this, this is unbreakable, really, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Let's yeah. be honest. Yeah, tegumented steel, and it's down to steel. it's down to forty millimeters from the uh, what was the U one forty four? Yeah, I, I think it's it? I think it's forty one. This one, I think the U fifty is forty one. So it's wearable. The crown's at um, four o'clock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is forty one. So yeah, it's. Um, I just don't know what sort of. I don't, I don't know whether I'd have it with the black bezel or i just can't you know i can't make my mind up which one i prefer if you know what i mean Mm -hmm. but i think it's such a it's a proper tool watch isn't it i mean i mean come on we just got five we just sorry matt we just got five suggestions here from marco five watches for matt upgrade the iwc mark to a glass suit to senator excellence Mm -hmm. keep the explorer one the explorer two the zenith a384 uh, oh, sorry, the Zenith H386 revival, or oh, I think he means the 8384, and then add a J- JLC reverso for dress watch. He says that's your f- perfect five piece. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. excellent. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah. Suggestions. Cheers, Marco. So, this is one of the first watches you'd go for, for if you're starting again. I think, yeah, I think if I was. In the in the market for a dive watch, as in a, a watch I would take in the pool or swim in the sea, I think I'd look at this. 
I think so this... you would pick this one over your Black Bay. Yeah. Yeah. This this one is the Black Bay is okay. It's a dive watch, but it's very it's a bit of a dressy dive watch. This is this, this is pure this is, pure tool yeah, watch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Pure industrial tool watches. Yeah. I, I yeah. see where you're going. Yeah. Well, and, and is, of the three that's pictured, the one with the gray bezel is probably the least functional, but I think it looks the best, just for just pure aesthetics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the yeah, gray bracelet. I, yeah, I, I like I like the bracelet, but I like the black bezel. I, I don't know whether obviously there's no picture there, but I'd like to see what that looks like. But I think if watch with a with a with a black uh, bracelet, I don't think you can. Can you? No. I think you can. I think I think this oh, okay. in the black yeah. bracelet. All oh, right. Okay. No. I don't like this the zin on the rubber strap. I don't like that at all. I'd probably, you know what I mean. The uh, the name on the uh, the rubber strap. I don't like mm -hmm. that. So you go with your next choice for your uh, five piece collection, which we need. Everyone needs a chronograph. Everyone needs a chronograph. Definitely. Absolutely. And this one is quite a nice one, I think. I Good think choice. so too. Good choice, Good Matt. The Hoya Camaro Panda Chronograph. There's only four in the world. Yeah. Hashtag rare birds. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is lovely. Really nice choice. Included as a wood music because you would want a panda chrono in the collection. Yeah. Not the not necessarily this watch you say, but it's <laughs> one, one you've chosen. So uh, I, I just love the, one. <laughs> the pan. The panda aesthetic is just I just love it. It's just great. Isn't it? Who doesn't love a panda? Yeah, Absolutely. everybody. Loves them. Yeah, everyone everybody. wants a panda, you know. don't they? Yeah. Everyone wants a panda dial. Yeah. Yeah. True. So that is probably Ma Matt. I'm I'm loving this watch. Excellent choice, man. It's I gorgeous, love the case isn't it? shape. Love that it's a panda dial, um, you know, that's branded just Hoyer. I mean, it's it, it, it's got everything. I love it. Nice choice. It, it's quite rare, though. That's okay. There's only, there's only about four of them in the world. That's okay. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Really? Wow. What kind of movement's in it? Oh, we don't care about that. <laughs> All right, fine. Fine. Uh, is it a 7750? Oh, it's, it's, I mean, no. it's, yeah, it's no. absolutely beautiful. It'd, it'd be some sort of Lejeu Le or Le Mania, certainly. Ah, Le Mania, yeah. Yeah, like, oh, it's a Valjeu 72, Thomas. I mean, how cool was that? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Not more than six pieces. Wow. That's six cool. pieces. Wow. You certainly Hence, selected the right watches birds. for your collection, so, then, haven't you? That, rare birds. That should be on the uh, growl list, probably. <laughs> yeah, you certainly selected the right watch for your uh, startup collection. Well, as someone who has uh, who has an old uh, Hoyer chronograph, I yeah, I approve. Is it a panda? No, actually, it's pre-panda. I've got. It's called the Big Eyes. <laughs> okay. Nice. I mean, so, this, uh, if yeah. Hoyer, if if you're watching, I should remake tag, that. Remake tag it. Hoyer, you you should definitely remake this because you would sell a boatload of them. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Love that cushion case. Yep. Yeah. Love everything Beautiful. about that watch. Beautiful. So yeah, the so thir that... the third one in your collection, in your startup collection. Startup collection. I love that startup <laughs> collection. <laughs> uh, one of four in your startup collection. Uh, this <laughs> this this one is a beauty. One of the. Uh, oh God. Going harking yeah. back to Dirty Dozen and all those sort of watches. We've got the uh, IWC Mark Eleven yeah, that's... included as because you'd love to have a military watch in the collection. This one's mm. your favourite, you say. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful I, I watch, don't. stunning. It's, it's not a very big watch, but the lugs and uh, it's just cool. It's a cool looking watch, no doubt. Yeah. Do it's... you have any military watches, Paul? No, no military watches, no. 
No. Was this 36, uh, Matt? Uh, I think so, yes. I mm. think it's. Uh, I think the lug to lug's quite decent, as in probably 45, maybe 46. Yeah, I was going to say 45, uh, 44, something like that. Yeah, it's. Um, but it's got it's got the aesthetic of the IWC I've got, but there's no date, mm -hmm. which which I think is a is an issue on that watch. I don't think it should have a date. Right, I agree. Uh, go back to the dial. Uh, go back to the dial real quick, if you don't mind. Go back to the sure. aspect. This is it just me, or does that look a little Aquanaut esque? The dial. Um. It's got it's got a flavor of it. Yeah, tinges of it, but that's, well, I'm trying to think. What is it? The batons? Do you think that make it? And the numbers and the batons that make it look like an aquanaut? Ah, uh, it could just it might just be nothing more than yeah. It could be the batons and just the style of the numbers, but um, like I said, it made me think of my fifty sixty six. For me, really not, it's certainly not the broad arrow and the uh, tritium. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> <in the circle. laughs> <Probably> that. <laughs> it's well, the uh, for me the handset the uh, the second hand. Yeah, that stubby yeah. hour hand. I love that. Yeah, mm. the stubby hour hand. You got the syringe minute hand, and then you got mm -hmm. this sort of. It almost feels like an orchestra's, uh, you know, the baton or whatever. You know, it, the conductor. It's got yeah. everything that you yeah. that you yeah. want. It, it it really does uh, for a field watch. Uh, uh, something with some history to it. You got the broad hour on think, there. Yeah, and, I don't and, think there's anything better than that. No, and you got it the 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 T for tritium, and, and it's it's it, it it screams tool watch, military issue tool watch, which and you can't go wrong with that. Gorgeous, love it. Marco is starting to annoy me, but at the same time, I'm now wanting to check out the glass. Of <laughs> excellent, damn it. That's yeah, an excellent uh, watch. Cheers. Yeah, really, really nice. I really, yeah. really digging this watch. It's that's perfect. It is perfect for a field watch, isn't it? I mean, come on. Yeah. What is better than that? Beautiful. I love it. Mm. Yeah, and it, if you if you don't mind a smaller watch, it's a, it's a great watch. Yeah, that's that's true. It's not it's not the. Uh, Biggest of cases, or you know, but who cares? Who gives a shit? And as you say, as you say, with uh, you saying uh, with you for this uh, five piece collection that everyone mm. needs a G Shock in the collection, Defo. and do you they use a G Shock to set the time on all the other watches? So, uh, this would Tell be me your, all. this would be your G Shock, yeah, I think so at the moment. I quite like that one. Yeah. Can That's kind of cool. In the collection and not count it against one of your five. Oh, yes. absolutely. I, I'm the firm believer, and I've said this on multiple channels, G-Shocks don't count. They don't okay. count in your collection. If you, if you looked at my screenshot of, or the picture of my watch collection, the G-Shock was in the background, so it's kind of... I wear it, not but counted. it's not there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wear it, but it's not. So this is a four <laughs> piece. It's not a five piece. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, to be to be fair, the G Shock I do have is. Um, it, 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 I mean, I've had it for ten years, and it's still mm -hmm. bang on. So <laughs> there's a lot to be said for G Shocks. Uh, uh, Okay, cool. so G-Shock still counts, so we'll move on to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. And the next one you said was a... Uh, well, you didn't... You said it was your choice of travel watch with a GMT function. Oh, yeah, yeah. The uh, bezel and bracelet can be changed to alter the look. Yeah. And this is the uh, Rolex yeah, GMT Master 2, the mm -hmm. 6710. Lovely, the, pep the Pepsi or the Coke, or the Coke. As you say, you can change the bezel or the Coke. to uh, or the black, black, black. 
Or the black, black, black. Yep. Yeah, true. You can change your bezel up to for the look you want. You change the bezel. You could. Yeah, it's it's just it's it's, it's just perfect. iconic, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It uh, is. Rancher. Uh, sorry, I was looking at the damn glass suit. Um, sir, <laughs> Mega. What do you think of this watch? What GMT is it? GMT Master. Pepsi. Uh, take take whatever flavor you choose. Take it, Coke, take it. Pepsi. Black, black, black. Pre ceramic, so it's pre ceramic then, huh? Yep. Yeah. Pre ceramic. It's classic. It's an icon. Did you have the uh... rancher? Oh, you had the you black, black, the, black, uh... black, right? Yeah. Did you have well, the, I had uh... the ceramic black, 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 but I also had the. Um... I thought you got every bezel. Oh well, that that was the pre ceramic, yeah. 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 Was it the stick dial? Yes. Cool. You've still got it? No. Oh, oh my God. No. <laughs> okay. It's just like, uh, all right. If, if, if I had missed, if, 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 if I felt I would miss that watch for a second, I would have sold it. I promise you that. I don't sit around and say, oh, my God. You know. Well, I would have bought it off you. Probably. Yeah. You. Today standards, but today standards, you would have got a hell of a price too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's 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 um, it's the perfect GMT person. It really yeah. is. It really is. It is. There, yeah. there isn't. You know, it doesn't have to be this one. It could be the no. new one or. Now, since that know, time, or, since the time the ads have caught on to the bezel game, like bezel insert game, they're like, nope. Nope, 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 yeah. nope, nope. Yeah. Because that's, that's Matt, kind of no, what I like about this one. It's kind of you could change it. You could have a Jubilee. You could have mm -hmm. correct Coke, Pepsi, blah blah blah. Yeah. No, uh, Matt. No interest in the in in ceramic. Uh, or you're just looking for the old world charm of the of the GMT Master. Well, uh, I just. I just like, I, I just prefer the pre ceramic personally. Pre ceramic, I mean, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. However, I do like your blue. <laughs> <laughs> well, but um, I, I actually, someone, I had a friend came up and I could send you a picture, and he had the he had the pre ceramic Coke, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. he had the forty two uh, Explorer two white polar, yeah. and when you look at the two side by side. When they're right next to each other, the polar kicks the old GMT's ass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's it's a superior watch in every way. Oh yeah, I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that at all. In including, it's I might add, contrast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. doubt it's a superior watch, but it's just for me aesthetic. You know, right. aesthetics. Mm -hmm. uh, what appeals to me is this version of that watch yeah so gotcha. and i know it's going to fit because it's it's 40 mil it's yeah it's and, quite and, explorative so mm -hmm. and, and, and g is saying he prefers the ceramic gmts and the uh, aluminium subs are certainly more pleasing oh, for him so, okay. well, that's cool that's yeah. interesting but yeah that is any, if you spend any time around the ceramics you're going to look at the pre-ceramic and you're going to think God damn, those indices and those hands are some tiny ass little punk ass. Those, mm. are, those are some tiny, tiny, tiny little punk ass hands or indices. I mean, the issue for me in the UK is if I'm wearing a watch and it blinds somebody 300 miles down the other end of the room, mm -hmm. I'm probably going to have some problems. You know? So, right. I, pr right, I prefer I hear you. A, a, a subtle watch, really, yeah. if I'm honest with yeah. you. Uh, you know, I'd I probably. Hear you. This is going to but, fly under the radar a little bit more yeah, than a, this, than a this ceramic. Yeah. yeah, 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 definitely. 100%. Yeah. I hear you. But, you know, what will be will be, you know. And they got their own, you know, they got their own special charm. Um, cachet. You know, like, yeah, like yeah. you said, you could. It, it takes a lot, a lot of cachet to buy one, man. It, takes <laughs> it certainly does. Well, it does. Yeah, it does, definitely. And, yeah. you know, I, I like all of them. I, I, I like the black, black, black. I like the Coke. I like the Pepsi. I like the this fact is, that you could put it on an oyster or a jubilee. Yeah. Uh, it just 
it, it's six watches, really. Yeah. It's, it's not three, it's six watches. Uh, did, the, you, did you guys ever get KK and Pitt like a uh, Jubilee on a uh, 40 millimeter Explorer, uh, 165 70 Explorer 2? Yeah, that Austin uh, did that. Austin yeah, Daniels did that. Did that. Yep, yeah, you yeah. did. It looked kind of cool. Yeah, it, no, it, I yeah, I did did that as well. It is, yeah. I think they should have. Yeah, won. so I mean that that really the travel watch. That's probably my ideal travel watch. Yeah. So you, that would be your five piece startup collection. There's the new fifty, the Hoya Camaro, the IWC Mark Eleven. The G-Shock 5600 and the Rolex GMT Master 16710. Yeah, I think the IWC and the Hoya are a bit grail. Uh, they're moving into the grail category, really. Aren't well, they? To talking of grails, I asked you if you I asked you if you could choose five grails that we could go through as well, and uh, that's yeah, a good little a, a good little a good little segue into that. Uh, now we're talking. We could uh, talk some grails that you, of yours, yeah. Matt. We could, so I, could, uh, I, should we establish what what grail means to people as well? Because well, it's me sort of, it, for me, it's a fantasy watch. It's a watch I, that I can yeah. never ob never obtain, and uh, it's a watch I just lust after and stare at on, on online or in in magazines or books. And uh, it's a it's a watch that I know will never be able to obtain, and. Uh, yeah, because I mean, some sometimes you see these um, sort of uh, comments, uh, sort of saying, "Oh, this is my Grail," or, or blah blah blah. But mm -hmm. it's it's all I suppose it's all uh, you know relevant, retrospective to uh, you know people's. I mean, if you're a multimillionaire, then nothing's is anything a Grail really, you know. So these are unachievable watches for me personally. But they are absolutely stunning. I don't know. What does everyone else think about the, the sort of word grail when it's attached to watch? What do you think, Rancher? Well, if you put it on, obviously, you never age and never die. If there's anything that Indiana Jones has taught us, that's what grail means, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, you know, I'm... I'm I think that it, yeah, it has diff a different meaning for for different people, but. Um, Lucia, you know, you've probably got your grail, haven't you? With the. Uh, I do. I do. That, it was yeah. one of my grails. Um, yeah. You know, I think we all have attainable grails that you know. If yeah, we I think save so. Save extra extra hard. We we you know we we it can become a reality. You know, my ultimate grail would be a uh, a JLC. Um, the uh, Giro Turbion Westminster, Westminster Chimes at eight hundred thousand oh. dollars. That's never no. going to happen. <laughs> but it can, yeah, you know, beautiful. it's still it, it, it's still fun to have uh, something that's probably going to be uh, unobtainable as a goal, but uh, as a grail. But uh, you know, ev everybody you, can dream. What about you, Neil? What What do you think of that term, grail? Do you have? Do you think they're un unattainable or obtainable? Yeah, I think of it. I think of grills as being as unobtainable. Yeah, that, that that's kind of where I'm at now. The the grails are pretty much. If you get your grail, then you don't have your grail anymore, do you? So, or do you have another grail? Or, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a good question. That's another question. Yeah. So the, the the grail pieces I chose were pretty much watches that I probably. We'll never, ever get to experience. Yeah. So we'll start off with uh, those in blue shirt. Yep, yep. Come on right up. So your first one was a Vacheron Constantine Historique American 1921. Yes. And I, I'm all over this watch. Yeah, I'm, and this, anybody who is either a fan of this show or or uh, also uh, watch what, watches uh, Watch Art Side with Dr. Bill Sanders um, knows this watch very well. And having seen Bill's uh, uh, watch in person, uh, it, it, the pictures don't do it justice. Uh, you see this watch in person, it's truly stunning. I mean, it now, takes your breath away. 
Now, have you seen the Longines 1935? I know it's not precious metal. I know it's right. like, but how does it compare to it? I haven't seen that watch in in the flesh. So I mean, it's cool. It, it's the same. It's the same kind of design. The off axis. Um, this being a, a the the Longines being a, a pilot's watch, and this, this mm -hmm. being a, a driver's watch for back in the day. Yeah, but, I mean, um, this is this, this is art, art Deco design, isn't it? It's, it uh, is. It is. I, it's for me. I like the fact that you know, you, if you're driving along <laughs> at that angle with the hand on the steering wheel, you could read the time. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure it would work on your right wrist. <laughs> if you mm -hmm. imagine, if you've got this watch on your right wrist, yeah, I don't think so. It would not work, would it? <laughs> it would not work mm -hmm. at all. Yeah, this is really for a left -handed. Uh, right a right handed person wearing it on your left hand. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the position of the crown really intrigues me. I just mm -hmm. think, I just, same here. Yeah, it, yeah. One o'clock crown. Yeah, looked amazing. That two o'clock where it is. Yeah, the way they've put that crown there. I mean, they. Oh, it's just. It's just those design features that you look at and you think, wow, you know, it's, um, I, I do like Art Deco. So the, this really appeals to me mm -hmm. and the fact, the fact that it's, if you look at it straight on, it's, it's, it's not what you think a watch should look like, if you know what I mean, because mm -hmm. it needs to be, you need to wear it on a steering wheel, don't you? Yeah. So it's 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 a beautiful watch, really. I mean, pink Still gold, nice. I think is yeah. Lovely. And I mean, you know, the average Joe in the street isn't even gonna. First of all, the average Joe in the street isn't looking at what you're wearing on your on your wrist. But for a watch nerd, um, you see this on somebody's wrist, you know that they know what they're. Okay. I, I will. I'll, I'll take that. I'll take your statement and raise it. I think having any rasher on is a, is is a statement is a statement yep. or accomplishment for any watch nerd. Well, I, I'd love to see somebody wearing this because I've never seen anyone wearing this. No. I've had this. I've uh, tried. I've tried this on in the jewelers, and it's, it's I just, have you it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. It's just yeah. amazing. <laughs> it's the uh, so it's quite a, a short lug to lug as well, isn't it? It's not. Yeah, it's very it's not a big thick. watch. It's, it's very thick, though. It's quite a thick watch. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. But sit sits well on your wrist. It's stunning. Yeah, it's just I could, I just wanted couldn't didn't want to take it off. I just. <laughs> what was I the did, price? If you don't mind me asking. Thirty thousand pounds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It's a lot of money. Launch into, the launch is just thirty five hundred. I'm just saying. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> Same aesthetic. And that's, uh, been, yeah, that's got, before. That's before negotiating, for Christ's sake. Right. Do you know what though? If you if you wore this around London, uh, the, there'd be no scooter boys coming up and trying to pinch that off. With that, no one even know what it was. <laughs> right. Correct. Absolutely. Uh, they, see, they they probably see it was gold though. Uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, <clears throat> Matt, I, I have to commend you. This is an excellent choice, man, because yeah. this is just such a beautiful, beautiful watch. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's up there, definitely up there. For right me. up there. Wow. One of, my, one of my choices. One of my grails. Absolutely. Yeah. Marco's saying, "Drop drop the link and they'll come on." Okay, I, certainly I can do that. Let's just get. Maths, uh, next one up here. Yeah. Yeah. So this. What do you think one? of that, Neil? Do you like that one, Neil? I do. Yeah. I like it quite a bit, actually. Um, yeah. It doesn't really fit my lifestyle, but as a work of art and something to lust after. Yeah. It's, totally. It's yeah. So this one, Matt, was the JLT Memovox tribute to Deep Sea, the European dial. Yeah. I love this one. I love it. It's a really nice one. This, this, uh, out of all of the uh, Grails, this is probably one that more affordable. I, yeah. I, well, there's only two for sale in, on Chrono Twenty Four at the moment. So oh, really? Mm. <laughs> it's not. Uh, there's only about nine hundred and fifty odd made. It's. Um, oh, really? 
yeah it's it's quite a, a rare piece but the the watch itself is jlc's answer to the uh, sort of dive watch uh i suppose the 1950s to 60s dive watch sort of um you know it's kind of like saturation of all the watches that were made at that time dive watches uh jlc thought you know what shall we do well we'll make an alarm well you know we'll give you an alarm dive watch mm -hmm. so very I think cool to me this is more useful than uh, a dive watch uh, sort of bezel this is the first diving alarm so uh, you it's, know, it's, a Vox, it's a memo box as well then yeah 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 so wow. you you would hear this not the i don't like the right one the american one you'd feel mm -hmm. it as well on the wrist, wouldn't you yeah you would you would yep. feel that this this watch is more useful than any other diving watch that was ever produced because you would feel it before you heard it right and i mean if you were diving 15 meters and you got the oh sorry not 15 meters whatever but you would you would hear or feel this watch more than a timing bezel I'll just say like so this, uh, uh, just a quick hello to marco just how yeah welcome marco. Marco. Hey, you're right. hey hey guys thanks for marco. having me on you guys hear me well yeah, 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 we'll yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you for joining us Hey, wait a minute! I've seen you on showcases. You, you're, you're the you're the baby Don Haynes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's I was a good nickname. Showcases, and your mom came in and told you to go eat meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I uh, swear it happened. Yeah, yeah, she told me dinner was ready. Sure, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so, so, yeah. I mean, glad you're here. Cool dude. watch. It's a this lovely watch. Like... This one, yeah, really nice one. I love it. So it's I a Memovox diver yeah yeah there's only right. um 959 made in the world i think and wow. two two in the uh, well there's two for sale in chrono one's italy which i wouldn't touch with a barge pole no. <laughs> but uh yeah i mean this is probably out of all my grail watches this is probably one that uh, you know you could you know potentially get if i wanted you know if i uh found the right one but this is mm -hmm. i just love the fact that it's it's got the faux patina it's got an alarm it's unique it's, yeah yeah it's absolutely bang on i mean jlc is quality isn't it let's let's be honest come on yeah I mean, nothing, nothing they make is going to be crap is it no Correct. not at all it's super i and i, I just prefer the simple simple dial i mean i know it's mm -hmm. got faux patina but you know Nah, man, it's 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 a this gorgeous. Is JLC, watch. JLC, Falcatina, come on. Yep. <laughs> Beautiful. So the next one was a bit of an interesting one. I thought a very ah, interesting, okay. a very interesting watch choice for a Grail. Which uh, I I found. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, sorry. That's the same one. I. Uh, Matt put the link in because I I'm, I cocked up on the link and uh, oh, no worries I, I me messed up and uh, Matt had to put it in for me. I put it in, yeah. Mm. Mm. The mm. Cartier crash. Yeah, that's this is yeah. definitely left field, man. Yeah. Whoa. But cool. <laughs> this is <laughs> a odd pick. I'm pretty surprised. I must admit. That is. What do you think to that, then, Marco? I mean, it's technically speaking a ladies' watch, but I guess you can consider. I mean, you could probably classify it as a unisex type of watch. So, yeah, this uh, is uh, this is <laughs> this is right up there. This is it's it's <laughs> funky with a capital F or pH. Have, yeah. Have you guys ever seen the uh, the uh, painting, the scream? Yes. Yes. It this looks is like what it, it looks yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. Watch. Well, you know what the story is on this watch. Yeah. Do you guys know what the story is, or supposedly the story is on this watch? Yes, I do, Marco. But you can tell me. Right. right. So, well, I don't know. It's it's not the car crash uh, story, actually. Wow. So that's not actually what happened. So, if I'm not mistaken, at the time it was Salvador Dali, who's an 
obviously a well-known artist. He went and worked for Bulgari, but supposedly the head of Cartier was a big Salvador Dali fan, and he was kind of insulted by the fact that he didn't work with Cartier instead of uh, he worked with Bulgari instead of Cartier. And so they made this watch kind of as a as a response to him working with with uh, Bulgari. And it's actually right. based on yeah, it's actually based on one of his or loosely based, I guess you could say, mm-hmm. on one of his paintings. Oh, that's that's pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I mean, for me, this this. Uh, I mean, you look at those. Oh, you you can see the picture there. The that the uh, numerals, the Roman numerals, the way they are so sort of. Uh, <laughs> You know, spread across that dial. It's mm-hmm. yes, persistence of I, memory. That's the painting. Yeah, I, I, I personally, I think any watch manufacturer that wants to make, well, it's it's kind of like a broken watch, really, isn't it? <laughs> it's you know, it's it's not uh, it's not the oval Cartier. Right. Do you expect or? It's right. a strange one. Would, would you could you carry this off? Do you think, Matt? Then would you would you wear this hey, off, please? Hey, Kanye West can carry this as off. Kanye West wears one of these. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah He's yeah, got he one. Are you, are you yeah. a big Kanye West fan then? Would you, <laughs> no. would you carry this off? I'm not. A, <laughs> I'm not a Kanye West fan, but he can carry off. So can I. <laughs> no, I think <laughs> because Kim Kardashian makes all of her dates wear this watch. <laughs> Yeah, that yeah, that could be true too. I mean, the uh, they have reissued it, haven't they? In uh, there's a, a boutique in London, and I think they make one per month of this particular uh, Cartier. It's, uh, I mean, the, the story I like is the fact that um, yeah, the the head of Cartier at the time in 1967. Uh, I forget his name. It's uh, Jean Jacques Cartier, I think. Yeah, something like yeah, that. Something yeah, crazy. <laughs> he got inspiration um, from a, a scorching car wreck that um, either the customer or an employee or a manager of the Cartier shop was involved in. Mm-hmm. And they recovered this watch um, and found mm-hmm. it had changed shape and oozed in different directions mm-hmm. from the heat of the crash and i just think i mean it's just such a it's such a beautiful story isn't it you know and, and that's that's the story i love about that watch i mm-hmm. mean uh, also the fact that you know anybody any manufacturer rolex oh let's sit down let's uh, let's make a watch that's uh, been involved in a, some kind of car crashes or mangled out and <laughs> broken and you know they they've, they've done it there and they've yep. made and it's it, it's it's beautiful. Absolutely. It's its own thing, and it's unique. And um, I, I think that's why I like it. it's unique. It's very unique. Yeah. yeah, you don't see many of those. No, no, hardly. So you said, Matt, <laughs> that the term "grail" means something different for everyone. A grail for some people is achievable, and for some not. And I think I fall into the camp with the grail watch will probably never materialize. I hope no. that makes sense. And I think for this next watch and the watch after, I think mm. that's certainly yeah. This sense. is where we're at now. Yeah, yeah. We're okay. certainly in the Grail watch. We're certainly in the Grail yeah. camp now. So uh, With, without a doubt, um, <laughs> having we, we come to the Elang and Zona uh, work now. So, yeah, uh, ha- having tried one of these on in person, um, uh, I was just blown away. And uh, I mean, this is. This is a big honking watch, uh, you know. It, it, it's yeah. chunky, but I mean, it is absolutely gorgeous and and just an amazing piece of machinery. Yeah, this is incredible. It's got, a, if I'm not mistaken, it's got a remontoir to control like the power, so that when the yes, the industry yes, does, change, yeah. mm-hmm. right, exactly. But there's also a really good budget alternative. If people don't have almost eighty thousand euros to shell out. It's called the uh, IWC Paul Weber. That's another great watch. Uh, yeah, I think I've seen that, yeah. I mean, for me, this, if you look at that face on that dial, it just, it's just amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's... Yeah, just stunning. First, it's the first digital, 
yeah, it's the first digital display with a mechanical movement. It's that I mean, the crown, everything is just it just screams. If you anyone, if you, you'd immediately see this, if you anyone wore that, you would bang on know exactly what that watch is. And Absolutely the, true. The, the, symm the symmetry on the dial is perfect. Mm. It is absolutely perfect. I love that watch. It is perfect. Yeah, that you know, there's nothing that's. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I spent like 20 minutes looking at this watch, talking to the watchmaker. This was at the Watch Time Show uh, in New York, and uh, uh, the only thing that was a little more impressive, at least movement wise being able to see through the case back was the um was the data graph um but i yeah either of these watches are true grail worthy pieces yeah I, the, these I are just, one and done you get this watch and and you're done you know and uh geese is pointing out that also uh, digital displays the fb john vagabondage three true um true. Oh, okay, yeah. Nice yeah. Watch. yeah good one geezer uh, th this to me is, if I was, you know, if I was in the uh, market for getting a Langard's on, uh, this would be it. I mean, there, there was, this would be my choice of Langer, to be honest with you. I mean, it's just, it's Over just a bang, uh, bang on. Th I'd, be this like, is uh, just... I'd be looking to see what 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 does Glass Hutto make that looks just like it. Nothing. They don't have anything. Nothing. Like it. Nothing. Uh, no. uh, Kenny. This is just bang on. It is. On but you would take this over a data graph? Data graph is yeah. the first yeah. in-house photograph? 100%. 100%. It's, it's just so different, Marco. It's just there's yeah. no, nothing like it that I've seen. It, it is. It's, it's just something out there that's just if, so amazing. The minute repeater as well. If we could get hold of the minute repeater. Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. <laughs> that would be the <laughs> ice Let's thing leave the minute line repeater. of that. Yeah, let's leave the, the minute icing. repeater aside because that, be that'd be the icing on the that's cake. That's the icing yeah. on the cake. But I, I have to agree with right. Marco. I, I, as much as I love this watch, I would choose a datagraph over this. Yeah, I'd probably even yeah. go eighteen fifteen. It's probably got a, it's got a slightly thinner profile than the datagraph. So I, I do love the I love the eighteen fifteen Marco. I love the eighteen. Yeah, the eighteen fifteen chronograph so is just gorgeous. Yeah, and I don't like the new datagraph. I prefer the old one. With mm -hmm. the no power reserve with the numerals on the dial. Mm -hmm. And the Richard Langer as well with the numerals. Yeah. Uh, Geezer yeah. saying the, uh, the the Gen 1 datagraph or the Poor Le Marit. Both of those are amazing. amazing. They're all amazing. Yeah. I mean, They're just yeah, a I brilliant mean, company, on. aren't they? I mean, they yeah, really on. are. Right up there. Right up there. My only issue is... Could you realistically spend this kind of money on a watch you'd wear like so few times? That's why I have such a hard time thinking about dress watches because when I think dress, I think, you know, kind of high horology, expensive wow. watches. No, people wear dress watches all the time. They wear them ironically. People wear oh. presents with jeans. And, uh, well, you know, if there's one thing the Italians have taught us is that you can wear a president with a tracksuit. <laughs> yeah, good point, Rancho. Good point. Yep. I, I, Thank you. I mean, I don't like dress watches, but I. Happily wear this with a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. No <laughs> You'd make the exception. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> make an exception. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, seventy-six thousand five hundred euros. You know, I will wear it, what, whatever the hell I like. You know, I'd, if you can wear a submariner with a tuxedo, you can wear a dress watch with jeans. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. 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 But it's a stunning choice, Matt. Uh, uh, you can't go wrong. Chills. Yeah. Thanks. Well. You thought this was a good watch. Wait until you see the next one. We're we're really in a Grail territory here. This one's just been released, I think, hasn't it, Matt? Just, yes. I recently saw a video of it on the FB John uh, site. That's it's incredible. FB John Astronomic Souffre. Ooh. Ooh. We're really we're really in Grail territory now. Yeah. This is, uh, Anybody know how it works? Because I still don't understand it. Well, I got, there a, I got there a team are, functions and complications. Yeah, the reverse yeah. has got a display. The, the, the reverse case back has got a display. And wow, this, this wow. Display. It's unbelievable. Just, just wow. stunning. Just amazing. I think this is the pinnacle, really, of uh, anything you can make mechanically in a watch. I think this is it, really. 
When I look at that back, I feel simian. It's like, I don't know if I want to stare at it with open mouth amazement or throw my own feces at it. <laughs> Ooh, uh, the, the, the dial as well, the face, it's yeah. symmetrical. It's <sighs> Yeah, that's pretty mi- – it's, it's the same – uh, it gives you the same kind of feeling as looking at 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 the back of the data graph. It, it, it's just no, it, it's an amazing piece of machinery. Uh, look at that; that's just wow. so cool. Just look at it; it's just yeah. amazing, isn't it? Yeah, golden sex of magic. Just really is just something a feat of engineering yeah, yeah. It, it is it is a feat of engineering definitely i wonder what the servicing costs are on a watch like this forget about it <laughs> <laughs> forget <laughs> about it <laughs> that's all out, i can think about out is of our league, Marco, out of our league yeah exactly it's probably the price of one rolling sub or something like that yeah because the for something like this you you're not even you can't even you know send this to the 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 Jorn service center in, in it's Florida. It's got to be Jorn himself, this, right? This has to go back, right? This has to go back to uh, to. I mean, there's to probably Jorn only itself. yeah. How many jewels do you think it's got? Oh my goodness! I couldn't stop thinking. Yeah, sixty-eight. So it's got hours. It's okay. got a calendar on the back. It's got a minute oh, repeater. Oh, minute okay, repeater. here's the question. Okay, here's the question I Nat- have. Natural deadbeat second. <laughs> The guy that has this, what is his other watch? <laughs> lots and lots of other watches. G-Shock. <laughs> a, a G-Shock, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, I mean, it's the dial amazing. does not look, the dial to me looks quite simple. <laughs> it does, it does. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Everything is controlled through that crown. Right. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. How do you do that? How do you control 18 complications just through the crowd? It, it's amazing. All right, guys. I've got to off. There's actually a, we're having a little in person meet about watches. So I've got to get ready. Oh, good. All one. right. Enjoy. Okay, Enjoy. Thanks for joining us, Rancher. Cheers, Thanks for having Rancher. me. See you later. So this one's got, it's got a calendar, full calendar, minute repeater. Uh, it's all beyond. Got, Torbjorn. Mini repeater, second time zone, moon phases, annual calendar, oh, equation of time, yeah. sunrise, sunset, natural you got, seconds. You've got an equation of time, has it? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's just, it's a, it's amazing. And all the settings of Ivac Crown, which is, as yep. this blue shirt says, amazing. You know what my only worry is, though, about independence is their, their staying power. That's my only worry because. I mean, in the history of watchmaking, there have been a lot of independents like John Arnold, Breguet, obviously Patek Philippe, Vacheron. They all started out as independents and then became kind of their own brand. But these guys like Jorn or, for example, Romain Gautier, they use their own kind of special tools. So it's like what happens if the brand goes defunct after, obviously, Jorn, you know, knock on wood, something happens to him. But when he's no longer with us, what do you do, man? I'm going to put that watch in the bin. I'm going to yeah, put that like, what do you do? <laughs> There's nothing to do. Who's going to repair that? Like, imagine, for example, if I, I got I this know. watch, I wouldn't care. <laughs> I mean, Jesus, like, that's that's my only only I, thing. I, with it. Yeah, be who could fix it? There will always I, be people who could. Fix I know it. what you're saying, and and for for someone like Laurent Ferrier, that that's more of a worry. I forget which company, but the, somebody has twenty percent of Chanel, the Jorn, Chanel. Yeah, Chanel. And Chanel. Um, so when, when, when Francois Paul finally, you know, passes on, I, I, I don't see the company exactly. going anywhere. Right. But I mean, even Roger Dubuis is struggling after obviously may you rest in peace. He passed away. Right. Mm-hmm. The, the whole, the whole, I think the whole thing that makes these great is that you got a genius watchmaker who's kind of the entire brand is built on the genius of one guy. Right. And, mm-hmm. and you can't transport his mind into somebody else's, unfortunately. That's a, again, sure. I mean, that's but not sure, a take away sure, anything from his watches. I, I don't surely, know. Surely he's um, he's got uh, apprentices working with him. I hope so. Right. Yeah, right. I mean, and, and, you so, know, as yeah. is as is Roger Smith and Philippe Defoe. I mean, they they all have, and as they all move on down the the track, you know, they are passing on their knowledge on to apprentices yeah um, i just think this this watch is probably as as good as it gets really 
in terms Absolutely. of... Absolutely. Yeah, I, I mean, you couldn't really ask for more. This is the pinnacle really? of watches yeah, that yeah, I've seen, that said, I've seen yeah. so far, yeah. I mean, that this is really is it, I think. Right up the top. I, I wonder, like, a whole bunch of FP Jorns out there that, like, can change the date correctly. A lot of the sports models. I mean, mm. it's not like the guy who's been perfect or anything. I mean, I mean, look at that. No. Look at that dial. That dial is like, it's just perfect, isn't it? I mean, you've got 18 functions there on that dial. And you look at it and you think, ah, oh, it's, it's beautiful, beautiful. It's just perfect, isn't it? Can I, I, can I share with you I another? Think another genius is coming up with the stuff. I think, that, I think Jordan's genius is coming up with the stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. sure if you already have it and it needs to be serviced, there will be a few human beings walking the planet that could actually fix it. And, you know, they'll have a job doing that, actually. Geese has right. got an interesting point. He said, he, FB Francois Paul Jean said he's uh, very aware of the importance of future serviceability. That's why he's reluctant to use synthetic materials. Okay. Right. But that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, this is a one of his, that's what he said in one of his interviews. Yeah, this is a steel case, I think. I think this is a steel case with a uh, pink gold movement. No, I think he's referring to in the interviews I, I heard him talk about it's it's shared among like Carrie Woodlinen and Dufour. They don't like using silicon in their in their movements because mm -hmm. the problem is is when you clean out like the movements, you can't kind of fix silicon. You know what I mean? Once it breaks, it's finished. You gotta just replace Correct. the whole part versus cool. metal parts, which you can just you can technically cool. replace them, right? Or fix them or whatever work needs to be done with them. Mm -hmm. Silicon you just take it and throw it in the bin, it's finished. But I do think this is a steel case. I don't think it's a precious material. I don't think this case is a precious material. I think yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised because resin is it's got a minute no. repeater, right? So it's, resin right. And steel is better. Right, yeah. The minute repeaters sound best with steel and and it is. It's a steel case. Uh, yeah. the dial is white gold, uh with it's white pink. and gearshe silver. Cool. Can I recommend you another one from Jorn? That's my personal grail. Could you put sure. it in the? Uh, could you put it in the chat? Or I could share the screen if if that's possible. Yeah, sure. Sure, go ahead. Sure. Here. So it's called the T10 Turbion, and it's super simple. But what makes it magical is this movement. So it's got a turbion, and it's got probably the biggest blue screws I've ever seen in my life. Those are oh. enormous. Wow. I think it's just gorgeous. It, it is. It's beauty in the eye of the beholder in that you know what you have, but nobody else does. Ten in the world. I think it's platinum case. And I love just mm -hmm. like the simple kind of layout of the dial. It's just beautiful. That's nice. It looks like a jack draw, doesn't it? Yeah, it does a little bit, Thomas. You're right. Yeah. But yeah, these, I mean, this movement. Move, the movement. The movement reminds me of somebody covering their eyes. <laughs> yeah. I that as well, Matt. It, looks, it does look it like that. It looks like somebody covering their eyes. You're right, Matt. Yeah. Excellent, cool. uh, excellent uh, choice, Marco. Yeah, beautiful watch. Very interesting. Yeah, Brill. Right. Let's wrap this baby up. Yeah, wrap this up. <laughs> That's been a wonderful. It's been great to have you on, uh, Matt. It's been lovely yeah, to see your collection pops. again and uh, round that up again and uh, see your Grail pieces and your five-piece collection recommendation well, uh, yeah i've had a great chat that's been brilliant thank you yeah it's been lovely to have a chat and uh always always a pleasure to see you zenith 384 mm -hmm. i'm uh, always envious to see that and it but yeah. it always puts the uh seed in my mind that i want i need one of those in my collection nine nine thousand pounds to you thomas oh <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Well, I've seen them for seven thousand pounds at Goldsmith. Okay, so. six and a half thousand. Nice, uh, nice. Just well, kidding. Yeah, no, Matt. I want to personally thank you um, for sharing uh, the collection with us. Yeah, it, it was no good problem. to go over it again and go through your grails and and uh, you know I think everybody uh, in the chat uh, enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, I want to thank everybody. Uh, who's participated in the chat? I want to thank Marco for joining us. Uh, yep. We truly yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, hey, baby Don Haynes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime, anytime. Um, and uh, I wanted to thank uh, Paul M, who uh, he was having some uh, connectivity <laughs> issues. Yeah, shame about that. 
Yeah. Um, hopefully he, uh, he can join us again. And, uh, Again, guys, as you know, um, you know, this show is just about friends talking about watches. So everybody's welcome. Yeah. Um, and uh, up. give us a thumbs up. Yeah, give Green. us a thumbs up. Oh, yeah, and, if you uh, a thumbs up, that'd be great. Spread the friend, word. Man. Tell your friends whether you like them or hate them. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, a big thank you uh, again. Uh, to Matt and uh, thank you to uh, Neil for joining us. Uh, there's yeah, Paul M in the, in and the, Bill uh, Sanders. In the Big thank you and to Bill Sanders. Well, Bill Sanders. Bill Sanders and the Rancher for joining us earlier too. Uh, it's always cool. good to talk to them. And uh, great job as always, my friend Thomas Burnett, the Iron Man of of, of Watch YouTube. <laughs> always a yeah. pleasure. Yeah, great to see everyone. Always, it's always great to see everyone on a Sunday. And uh, thanks, see, thanks see Thomas for all that. Oh, Thanks for all the homework. <laughs> it's a pleasure, Matt. Pleasure. It's great, great to see you all, and great to see, great to see, have you on, Matt. Great to uh, chat with everyone, and uh, as as Bruce just said, it's great to have everyone join us all here on the uh, stream and uh, have a good chat about watches and uh, see all the community in the chat there and uh, come together on a Sunday. Yeah, brilliant Indeed. stuff. Thanks, guys. Yep. Thanks, everyone. All the best. Take Have care. a great day. Yeah. Cheers. Take care, everyone. All right. Look after yourself. See you next weekend. Bye, Z.